Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a comparison of the DOIO HitPad version one series. So here we have their mini, their HitPad, and the HitPad Pro. To connect to your console out the box, you will connect your power to the power port. You will take your other end, take the adapter, connect here, and connect right into your console. Press the home button and you'll be all set. If you're on PlayStation 5, you have the Brooks Wingman FGC and the Mayflash Magic S Ultimate. If you're on Xbox, you have the Brooks XB3 and the Mayflash Magic X. And if you're on Xbox or PS5, there are numerous booter devices. There's the Mayflash Magic Boot for Xbox, the Mayflash Magic Boot for Xbox, the Cosmox Hot 42 Booter 5, and the All56.com booter device. But note out the box, none of these controllers can use these booter devices. The pass-through port on the side of all of these pads is turned off. So after playing with your device with the adapter connected to the cord, you may want to customize the colors and change the splash screen and do different things. Before you do so, go into the web configurator. The first thing you do is do a backup of your configuration. All three of these shipped with 0 0.7.7. I don't know if it's something from the factory, but all three had issues out the box where if I change the colors, I change the splash screen, I change the pin mapping, anything I changed when I saved and restarted, either they froze or something wasn't right. So my advice to you is, Instead of running to an issue, doing the flash nuke, reload the new firmware, just do it right off the jump. So back up, download the flash nuke, download the latest firmware, they're not hard to do, it's very easy. Install that on these controllers and then customize the way you want it, save that configuration and you'll be all set with no issues. Great build quality, fresh firmware. You can enable the pass-through port by turning on pin 26 and then you'll be able to use these booter devices or these adapters in the pass-through port and use this like any other level of this pad. And after living with all three of these, that is something I noticed that out the factory, the firmware is not stable and you do want to wipe it and reload it if you plan to customize your controller. So comparing the HitPad Mini to the HitPad Standard, you can see the Mini is your compact mechanical keyboard switch style controller. It has your arrow key style with the buttons here and these are your taller switches. They're very smooth. The body is very flush and tall. It's made out of metal. If you look on the bottom, so it's very durable. It has a lanyard slot that I attached on here. It has your pass-through port, your power, your power, nothing on the bottom and nothing on this side. This pad here, it has your small buttons across, one large here on the bottom, nothing on the bottom here. Pass-through power, your power here on the top, and nothing on this side. If we do the paper test, what is a paper test? You take a standard piece of American 8.5 by 11 paper, we're gonna fold this in half, lay it flat, and put it right on top of the hip pad standard. And you can see it is roughly one piece of paper and one adapter in height and exactly a piece of paper folded in width. When we look at the mini, we grab one piece of paper, fold it down, fold it down, put this right on top, and that is roughly the height of the mini. The mini is one adapter shorter than that piece of paper. So why would you do this? If you're at home and you're not sure how big this is, take this paper, put it on your desk, put it on your lap, and play just like this. That'll give you a good clue of how it's gonna feel on your desk, on your lap, or wherever you're going, and help you understand how big this is in person. So when comparing the two, this is really a class of its own because the switches are totally different, the layout style. They both have the arrow keys, but these are much tighter arrows, just like a, a standard keyboard would be. This is kind of your wider keyboard style. These buttons here sit on this side, whereas these buttons sit here, and you also get the extra buttons as well. And that's how you compare these two. When comparing the HitPad Pro to the Mini, if we do our paper test, we turn it sideways, we can see the Pro is almost exactly the size of a piece of paper. And another way to measure the Mini, take the paper, fold it in half, and then fold one side down in thirds, right? If you lay that right on top, you can see it's roughly, that's how wide this is roughly. And again, in height, it's basically an adapter taller. So if you look at that, you compare the two, it's a very big comparison. So when you're comparing these two models, again, you know you want the keyboard style, you want it tight like a standard keyboard, you want the other buttons here, and you want this compact and durable, you want the mini. Where this pad here does have the arrow keys here on the top, you just want more space, you want the aerodynamic, these are all smalls and one large, and that's how you compare these two. And when we compare the standard to the pro, we can see when it comes to width, they're the exact same width. So this one here, when it comes to height, it is roughly half the size and height. If I take an adapter, it is roughly a full adapter, like right to the edge of the silver part here, shorter in height than the Pro. When I go around the Pro, I can see there's a pass-through port and a power, just like the standard. There's a power, just like the standard. Nothing on this side, nothing on this side, and the bottoms look exactly the same. The only major comparison between the two are the switches that come with them. The standard has a slightly taller keycap, whereas the Pro is slightly more flush. The keycap sides, you can see this more rounded off, so if you like to slide your fingers, these switches will definitely slide better. These are taller. You can still slide, but they are taller. 
Both of these pads have the metal build, the acrylic on the bottom, they both feel very nice and durable. The only major difference you'll find between these two is the switches on the standard are slightly more close together, so your fingers are a little bit tighter on this pad here. Compared to this pad, they are more ergonomic and more naturally spread apart. And when it comes to general layout, you have your directionals here and the two extras. Directionals, two extras, they are essentially the same layout, just sliced down the middle and spread apart. So if you're on the fence between these three models, the Mini is your standard keyboard style, very tight and compact and durable. The standard is your standard leverless style with the switches slightly closer together. The smalls all around and large on the bottom. And the Pro, your ergonomic with the nice spacing, smalls all around, one large on the bottom. All same build quality with both having the Gateron switches and this having their taller mechanical switches. That is their version one series. Thanks for watching.